Campbell Wrestling fans, we want to try something new. We have a Coach's Corner podcast. Uh, just kind of what we do as coaches, talking to each other uh, about things going on. And, and today I got Josh Heil here, my head recruiting coordinator. And we're going to talk about the state championships and how our incoming freshmen did. Yeah, so over the next month we're going to have um, all of our guys going. And uh, this past weekend we had, we had ten guys go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Six of them won it. We had two guys get third, and we had a, a blood round guy and a, a runner-up. So uh, a, a very successful weekend. Yeah, so let's talk about the Georgia guys. We had uh, three guys competing uh, for Georgia, uh, two big guys and a 57-pounder. I mean, what do you think about their matches, how they looked, how they competed? Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, we'll start with the, the two big guys, um, Aaron Reiner, uh, impressive performance. The week prior, he lost to the guy. Um, and then at the state tournament, he came back and pinned him in, in the first period. So uh, a very good performance by him. He bonused his way through the tournament. Um, and then Brock Hacker, same thing with him. Is he, he bonused his way through the tournament. Uh, and a guy that he beat 3-1 to one or 5-1 to one the week prior, he pinned in the finals. So um, those two guys improved from week in to week out. Um, and then Seth Larson, he capped off a, a really good season and a really good career with his fourth state title. Yeah, Larson really impressed me. I think uh, what I saw from him is being able to do that single leg attack, kind of shooting around guys on both sides of the body, uh, tough on top, throws a boot. Um, and, and so for him, I thought he was probably just, just one of the more dynamic wrestlers of the state tournament. Um, I mean, what do you think about you know, his, his wrestling, his style of wrestling? What are some things that, that you see or maybe some athletes that, that, that are currently competing that he reminds you of? Yeah, he could. Uh, he's got a pace to him, you know. He's uh, he's a guy that you could see come in and 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 be very good right away, just because um, you can tell he works hard by the way he's just smashed everybody at the state tournament and throughout the season, um, and just the way he wrestles, like you said, from one side of the body to the other. That's that's something that's very hard to teach, not only at the high school level, the youth level, but at the college level. You know, we see it in our room. It's it's something that. Not a lot of guys can grasp just on day one. This dude's doing it in, in, in high school. Yeah, and then Reiner, I, I mean, he's somebody that I enjoy watching. You don't see heavyweights very often that are good on top. And, and you know, his match, he went in there, grabbed a single leg, big lift, puts the guy down. Uh, he had a kind of a weird suck back. Uh, I think he finished in sort of like that little cow catcher uh, position. But he's got kind of a weird feel on, on top. I mean, what are your thoughts about his, his style of wrestling? I mean... It fits right into the Campbell style, right? We're, we're very good on, on the top position. A lot of our, our, our guys hit cradles, and he's a big cradle guy. He also lo likes to run boots, and not often do you see a heavyweight run boots. So he has a very unique style uh, for, for a heavyweight. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how it translates to the college level because it's, it's not something you see every day, and we're excited to you know, see what it brings. And then there's Brock Hacker. So Brock, we actually recruited as a 197-pounder. Watch him in the state tournament, sort of how he wrestles. And I just remember his dad mentioning, oh, I think he might be a heavyweight. Uh, you know, I watched him controlling the underhooks, pushing forward. Um, you know, he gets in the finals. Somehow he gets a, a chicken wing. I think he ran that chicken wing for about a minute and a half before he turned the guy and pinned him. I mean, where do you see him at in terms of weight? Do you see him maybe building into a heavyweight? Do you think he's just going to be a big 97? You know, he looks like he's got, like, you know, he looks like he's strong, but it also looks like his muscles aren't defined yet, right? He hasn't gotten those, like, old man muscles yet, right? He's, he's, uh, he looks strong, but he doesn't look, like, totally put together. I mean, what are your thoughts on him in terms of what weight we might see him at? Uh, is he going to start at 97 and build up? Is he career 97? I mean, what do you think about uh, Brock Hacker? I mean, I th if, it, if it's anything like his dad, he's going to be a heavyweight. His dad's huge. You know, when, it, when they came up on the visit, the first thing you notice is the dad's giant, you know, but... Uh, you never know. The, the kid right now, you see him and he, you're like, okay, he could, he could wrestle 97. He's weighing about 205, 210. Um, but once you get on that, that college weightlifting plan, you know, the meal plans and all that stuff, the dude could explode and be a heavyweight. So uh, you never know. It's just watch them wrestle. He's, like you said, he's throwing those hooks. He's doing a lot of those upper weight level uh, uh, techniques. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens when he gets, gets to college and um, starts lifting like a, like a big boy. Yeah, so that's three Georgia state champs, which is great. Two big guys at 57. Uh, moving on to Illinois, we had Colby Crouch. Honestly, I mean, the dude's a high flyer. Uh, he's one of the more entertaining guys to watch uh, coming in. 
You know, I would say him and Lampka are the craziest wrestlers of all time. And watching his state tournament, his high flying, throwing guys, uh, you know, just running guys off the mat, first one back to the center, pushing guys around. I think in his state finals match, I remember, you know, they thought he was just pushing the guy off the mat, but he's just super aggressive. I mean, what do you think about his wrestling and his ability to kind of find those throws and, and some of these roles and, and, and just, you know, sort of what he brings to the table? Yeah, it's, uh, I think y you take a look back at, at his state tournament last year where he, uh, like he's, He's put up a lot of points, and then he, there's an injury time, and he wasn't able to finish the match. And then this year, where <clears throat> he didn't put up a lot of points, he got hurt in the process, and then came back, finished the match, put the guy in his head, and, and scored a big four-pointer. Um, so he, he, you see the improvement on, on and off the mat with this kid, and he's, uh, um, like you said, he, he's going to send it. You know, Every match at the state tournament, he threw someone. Um, he turned someone. Um, he got back points, he got takedowns, every match he was just <laughs> doing everything, right? So it's, uh, and one thing that I, you hit on, which is important, he was the first one back to the center every single time, running into the center, running into the center, because he just wants the action, you know, he, he wants all that smoke and he's, uh, he's a gamer. So it's, watching him, you hit it on the head, it's exciting. Yeah, and he looks for those throws, you know, last 30 seconds of his finals match. He finally finds the throws. He'd been pushing for it the whole time. Um, but, but what I thought I was most impressed about, or the things that excited me the most, it was either his quarters or his semis where he's actually somehow on bottom. He goes to his own back, and he kind of grabs a guy and rolls him. And, and so he's just not afraid to kind of risk it, you know. Like, did he need to go to his own back? Probably not, but he doesn't care if he thinks he's going to pin the guy. I mean, what do you think about kind of a guy that's willing to take risks? Do you think that's important? Do you think it's going to kind of pay its div dividends on this level? I think, uh, I mean, you, you take, it, take a look at all these different guys like Dylan Ness and guys like that who – they take take risks in the, in their in their wrestling. You can't take that away from a guy, right? You ha you have to you know help him with it and, and help guide him um, in a way where he takes these risks and he ends up on top more times than not, right? Um, and he's doing that right now. <clears throat> he I don't think he lost a match this whole senior campaign. I think he pinned almost every every kid in the match. Um, so when he gets here, it's you know. You help them with those things. You you, you, you kind of indulge in it, and you know, say go send it. You know. Yeah, but he's a Greco guy, and, and obviously Anthony Moulton is a Greco guy, Fargo champ. I know he won it in freestyle, but he's had a lot of Greco success. We got Colby Crouch coming, um, so I think it's interesting uh, that we'll have some of these light guys. Um, oh, and again, we have one more, the Ohio kid that we have, Cooper Shore. Uh, you know, Fargo All-American and Greco. So I think it's interesting we're going to have some guys at the lower weights, 25, 33 range, uh, all with that Greco uh, high-flying, um, you know, throwing style of wrestling. I think they can really learn from each other. Uh, for those of you that have been able to watch Moulton this year, this back half of the season, you know, Moulton's doing a lot of shots to the upper body, and I think uh, those are things where maybe, you know, Colby Crouch comes in, he's learning from Cooper Shore, he's learning from Anthony Moulton, and maybe uh, his ability to do those throws, um, it, it's going to kind of help. Uh, catapult him to, to have some more success early on. Do you see him kind of learning from those older guys um, that have, you know, had a, at least a year of college experience on the belt that have used the throws at this level? Yeah, it, it's going to help him tremendously because if I got to go back and watch all of his matches, but I don't think he took one shot in, his, in the whole state tournament. He didn't take one shot. Every takedown was off of a throw or, or the guy taking a bad shot and I'm throwing him anyway. So him to come in and work with a guy like Anthony Moulton who's going to shoot and go up into the upper body, Colby Crouch is going to learn a lot from that, um, as, well as, as well as Matt Beam, who's a, guy, a big Greco guy. He uh, Fargo All-American last summer. So both those young guys are going to come in with, with An Anthony Moulton and Cooper Shore and just learn a ton from these, these upper body guys. So. Well, yeah, since you already brought him up, Matt Beam, we'll talk about our two guys that took third. Matt Beam taking third in the Iowa State Championships. Uh, and then we also had Reese Courtney, who took third in Indiana. Reese coming in as the number one seed. I'm not sure where, uh, you know, our Iowa guy came in ranked. But, um, you know, what are your thoughts on those guys, you know, coming in expecting to win it and then battling back and still taking third? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Matt Beam, it was uh, honestly a very impressive performance by him. He, he was coming in, I think he was 35-0, and 0, hadn't lost all season. 
and he dominated every match. Even the match that he lost, he was yeah. the one moving forward. He was the only one to be really deep in it on a shot. Uh, he rode to the last second in double overtime and ended up giving up the reversal with two seconds left. Um, which is, it's a map management thing, which he's going to come here and he's going to learn and um, that, that ain't going to happen again. But that kid, he, uh, he worked hard. He, he was always the one pushing forward. He was never the one going out of bounds. So um, his performance, even though he didn't win it, we were, I was very uh, excited for it because he showed some grit on the backside there. Coming back and taking third is the hardest thing you can do. Yeah. Right? And that kid he wrestled is tough. And, and uh, yeah, man, I, I saw the same thing. He's just going forward and it seems like, uh, you know, the kid just kept his head in front of him, didn't do very much, didn't do very much. Uh, you know, Matt Beam got in on a couple great shots, ran out of room on the edge, uh, didn't quite capitalize on it. And it just seemed like the kid took one shot and he was able to capitalize on it. Um, you know, but he's a guy that, man, he was just going so hard. Uh, and, and so, man, it was, it was frustrating for me to watch a guy that, to me, is the better, better wrestler, the best wrestler in the, in, in, in the state at his weight, and uh, to fall short, but to still kind of be able to, you know, dust off his boots and get back to work, I think it's huge because I know he was expecting to win. I know he knew he was capable of winning. I think he knew he was the best guy at the weight, but sometimes the best guy at the weight doesn't win, and, and so to be able to go and kind of, Go get the next best thing is huge because there's guys that don't do that, right? There's guys that just fall on the backside. And, and I think Matt, uh, I hate to say it, but I think he's going to come in with a chip on his shoulder. You know, you know his coach is a, is a great, uh, great coach, um, wrestled for Northern Iowa. Um, and, and he always kind of wrestled like he had a little chip on his shoulder. And I think we're going to get that with Matt Bean. Mm, oh, yeah, for sure. He, uh, I can tell he's hurting right now. He hasn't responded to me in a couple of days, but uh, he's, uh, he's going to be a tough one. When he gets here, it's... Uh, He's going to be ready to rock, so I'm, I'm excited for that. Yep, and then Reese Courtney, I actually didn't get to watch the match he fell short on, um, but, you know, he was dominant. The, the match, his first round, uh, I remember him just kind of teching the guy, taking him down, letting him up, hands, in, you know, hands on the back of the head, pushing him around. Um, you know, Reese is, is very, very talented, uh, and again, you know, ranked number one in the state of Indiana, falls short. I mean, what are your thoughts on his performance? Yeah, so for, for those of you who don't, have never watched an Indiana State tournament. It's it's very different than every state tournament in the country. Uh, round one, if you lose, you're out of the tournament, and if you win, you place. Uh, so he ended up winning his first round, very dominant, like Coach Santos was saying. Second round, again, very dominant against the the third ranked kid in, in the state, and then in the semis. It was a very competitive match, and, and kudos to that kid because the shot he got on Reese was. You couldn't stop it. He, he, Reese went for an attack, circled up, and boom, hit him with a, hit him with a double leg and scored it. Um, but Reese battled back, uh, found his escape, and then in the third was really deep in on a shot to, to get the go-ahead score and, and didn't end, end up finishing and then um, fell to the backside and, uh, again, battled back for third. He was in a position in that third and fourth match where there was 15 seconds left. It, it was tied one-to-one. -one. The kid got Reese in a cradle. Could her, Reese could have easily just bailed, given up the takedown, and that be that. He gets fourth. But he battled through it, somehow ducked the arm, and, and got the takedown out of it and ended up winning and getting third. Um, and, and those are the matches where those are team points right there, right? Uh, at, at tournaments, you know, at this level, tur uh, tournaments are won on the backside. Um, so he, uh, he was able to fight through that position and, and get the win. Nice. So let's move on to, to Lane Kaiser, another high-flying guy. Jiu-jitsu background, really good on top. And you talk about a wild match, his state finals match. I don't know what the referee was doing. He was scoring, you know, back points and reversals that didn't even exist and, and just kind of a crazy match. And, and for those that don't know, the guy that he had in the state finals is actually uh, the, the guy he lost to last year in the state finals. So uh, he goes in there, he has to kind of get over this hurdle, had never won a state title before, has this guy that's beaten him before, high-flying, crazy match, referees calling all sorts of crazy things. I mean, what are your thoughts on his performance and to be able to go and take a second place, you know, state runner-up performance, and then this year turning around and becoming the state champ? Yeah, not only was that kid, uh, did he beat Kaiser last year, but he was going for his third title, whereas Kaiser never won a state title. Um, but it, it didn't phase Lane, he came out and, like you said, the match was crazy. In the ref's defense, who knows what was going on in the match because they were flopping around. It, it looked like jujitsu out there, right? They're, they were both on their backs for about half the match. Um, 
But, uh, I mean, it, it was impressive, you know. It was everything we thought Lane Kaiser was, was going to be. And um, he's going to go out there. He's, he's going to put up a lot of points. He's going to grind and um, might be a little sloppy, but it's going to get cleaned up. Um, and he ended, he ended up pulling out at the end. Uh, he, he had the kid pinned in the second, but the kid fought through, and they, uh, they battled that third period out, and Lane ended up on top. Yeah, what I really liked is he hit this move called the Merkel where uh, he's on top and, and Kaiser kind of grabs a head and arm, he hooks the leg and, and he rolls and he probably should have gotten two back points but instead he gave up two reversal mm -hmm. and uh, I counted two backs, I think it should have been two backs, I don't even think it should have been a reversal or an escape, I thought he was still on top but he kind of kept his cool, continued wrestling uh, despite how things might have been getting called and sometimes that's what you have to do, you have to just control the match, control what you can control, not worry about how the ref is calling things and I thought that showed a lot of uh, maturity on his part to be able to kind of block out what was going on in the match. Uh, him and his, his opponent, honestly, did a phenomenal job at just kind of locking in on, on trying to win the match. What do you think about him showing his maturity and, and sort of being able to just kind of focus on the, the task at hand? Yeah, for, for a kid that just started wrestling like five years ago, taking it really serious, um, his maturity has grown very fast. You know, uh, when he came on this visit, you, you could tell the dude, he's, he's very disciplined in his diet and his training. Um, and on the mat to show that composure, it, it shows he, he takes wrestling serious, right? Um, and we always tell our guys, the college level, this, this is a professional level. Um, it, it doesn't get higher than this for folk style wrestling. And, and he showed it in that match where he, he could have let his emotions get the best of him and, and he battled through it and uh, ended up on top. I'm going to give him a hall pass, but Lane Kaiser, if you're watching this, finish the match, right? Uh, you know, you wrestled a great, you know, two and a half periods. I think the last 30, 40 seconds, you were kind of holding on. Next time, finish the match and put it away. You got me, Lane? Uh, but moving on to, to Brent Slade. Uh, you know, our Iowa guy, big guy, uh, honestly, he was a, a lot of talk about his state finals match. Uh, I think before I even watched his state finals match, I was seeing kind of the buzz about it. Uh, basically what happened is there was a stare-off between him and his opponent, and he has this big dude who's, who's uh, you know, a very talented wrestler that he was competing against in the finals, and they were kind of doing this, this stare-off before they wrestled and just locking eyes kind of like the old Mike Tyson way. Uh, so I was able to kind of watch some of that buzz before I was even able to watch the match. But uh, phenomenal match, points getting scored back and forth, uh, a lot of composure on, on his part, kind of, uh, you know, holding great position and capitalized what he could, kind of put the match away at the end. I think the kid thought he was, was losing when the score was actually tied. He took a bad shot and, and uh, you know, he ends up spinning behind. But what are your thoughts on his performance, uh, both in his finals and, and also his, his semis and quarters? Yeah, Slade's the, he's probably the last person you want to stare down because he, he's going to take that personal, right? Uh, he, he, he's going to give it to you. Um, and that's what he did. Right away, he got that takedown. And then um, I don't know what the ref was, was thinking with all those stall calls against Mike because he was, he was the one pushing the pace and everything. Um, but uh, th then he got the second takedown, so two takedowns to zero. Um, and, and he gave it to him at the end there with that celebration. So uh, it, it was... Uh, it was exciting to see, you know, especially after how last year's state tournament ended. Um, if, if, you, if none of you know, uh, Mike was, was wrestling. He, I think he was the projected champ um, or something like that. And in his second round match, he was wrestling, hit a beautiful uh, slide by into a mat return, and the ref called potentially dangerous. Um, so the kid stayed down, um, and Mike got pushed, pushed to the backside. Uh, he lost that match, and then he came back and got third. Yeah. Um, and that's where I kind of found Mike, right? I, I was going through the state tournaments last year, and I was like, so this kid got pushed out, and he battled back for third. That, that's really hard to do, right? That, that's a very emotional. So what are his placements? It's fifth, then he was disqualified, ended up taking. He placed his freshman year, and then uh, I think his sophomore year, he was. COVID. COVID, yeah. And then he was DQ'd. And then he was DQ'd, got third, and then first. Yep, okay. Yeah. So one of the years, it, it, was, it was either COVID or it was a skin funk. I can't remember what it was. Um, but, yeah, that's what the... So the, really under the radar, but now, I mean, obviously the kid can wrestle, you yeah, know. Yeah. What I think is interesting is just how much he moves. If you watch him, he's always moving his hands. He's always moving his feet. Uh, he's very, very quick. 
Um, yeah, you, you know, he's got the slide by stuff, but he's also just able to kind of drop an attack, and he's so long. And and it was funny because we've been talking all year, me and me and Josh about him, and and uh, I, I had no idea how big he was, right? And uh, I was watching him in a state state tournament, and I was like, holy crap, this dude's a big 97 pounder, because he was somebody we were considering as an 84 pounder, and. Uh, I just don't think that's happening, right? I mean, if you see, you know, his first match I was able to watch and he's standing next to this dude and he just looked like a giant. He looked like Tay Gaddy Aldi out there, right? Uh, just a big, big dude. Um, so I think we got a really large, talented, quick 197-pounder uh, uh, that's going to learn a lot from Levi in his first year. And, and I think, uh, to me, he reminds me a lot of Tay. You know, he, he kind of chops the arms down, does a lot of faking. He seems like he's more of a cagey wrestler than a hand fighter, but... Uh, you know, I, I think he's going to probably learn a lot from Tay as well. I mean, what do you think? Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, over the summer, he wrestled 160 pounds at Fargo, right? And now he's wrestling 190, probably weighing about 210. You know, so the, the guy put on a lot of weight real fast, um, and, and you could tell in, in his muscles, right? Um, so he's, he's going to be a very big 197 when we get him here and get him on uh, that college lifting program. Um, so he, uh, he's going to learn a lot right away. You can tell with, his, with the way he improved from Fargo to halfway through the season to now, um, he's just improved his game so much uh, week in and week out. Um, so it's, it's exciting. Yep, and so the last two guys that, that, that we can't really talk about because they haven't signed some things yet to, to, to actually come to school here, but they're committed to us, uh, two heavyweights, um, you know, one making the blood round in Illinois and one being a state runner-up in the state of North Carolina. Two really big guys uh, that are going to add some much needed depth. As you know, at heavyweight this year, we have one heavyweight. I mean, the kid's a stud, but it's one guy, right? If he goes down, we got to bump an 84-pounder all the way up to heavyweight. You never want to do that. Uh, and, and this year, you know, Josh, you did a great job. We have, I think we'll have five or six heavyweights there. At 197, we're going to go from one guy to five or six 97s. Uh, those Georgia guys and some of these other we've talked about are our, our, you know, state champs coming in to kind of create some depth and to battle for that spot with Levi to help, you know, him grow and also have some, you know, some, some cards in the deck that are going to help us uh, in the future to be able to be a competitive team. So you've done good there. Uh, you know, that's kind of the recruiting class, how we've done. Uh, for you guys that are going to have your state championships coming up, I know Florida's is coming up. Uh, you know, we'll be able to watch, you know, Hodge, and then we have one of our big juniors that we're recruiting right now that we can't mention. Uh, what other states are going on uh, this next year or this next week? Uh, this next week, you're going to have Florida. Uh, no, uh, not this week, but next week's going to be Florida. Uh, I want to say this weekend's going to be Preps, which we have Trujillo at. Um, and then this weekend, Michigan, which uh, Lampa won't be wrestling at. Um, other than that, I don't know if we have too many other guys because Ohio's not till later. Um, yeah. PA, New Jersey's not till later. Um, I know Caleb Wright has his, his districts this weekend. He said he pinned everyone at his sectionals last weekend. So, nice. um, yeah, so all the guys are, are ready to go. Well, hey, good start. You know, like I said, a lot of state champs in this very first batch of state you know, championships. Um, looking forward to watching these other guys compete. Best of luck to you guys if you're watching this. And uh, go Camels. <laughs>